Have you heard the one about the man with five penises? His underwear fit like a glove. That was my maternal grandmother's favorite joke. And I heard it many times a year from when I was very young until her death in 2002. The best part being the punchline delivery because she couldn't say the words without cracking herself up. And her guttural laugh shook her big bone body and that was something to behold because so much of her life, my grandmother was, was a miserable person. Um, she was uh, a difficult, difficult person who alienated loved ones with great frequency. Now, somehow I was spared the worst of her emotions and therefore could really grow to appreciate the things that made her such an unusual grandparent. She was a socialist. She spoke openly about the two illegal abortions that she had in the 30s. She had her gallstones made into jewelry. <laughs> but most important to me is how my maternal grandmother, Shirley, was the first person to model that you can be a proud Jew while questioning the state of Israel in the name of Palestinian sovereignty. <clears throat> well, um, as I got older, she and I developed a relationship outside of the family context. So when she spent the last years of her life in a nursing home, about two hours west of here, I'd go see her regularly. And over time, those visits became routinized. The day before I was due, to arrive, she'd phone me up with the names of the specific dishes I was to pick up at the nearby Chinese restaurant and bring with me for our lunch. Upon arriving at the nursing home, uh, takeout in hand, she'd be waiting for me in the lobby, seated in her wheelchair. As soon as I saw her, I'd say, Grandma, hey. But because of her compromised eyesight, she couldn't see me until I was right in front of her. But as soon as she did, her arms went up like this, and I leaned down for my big grandma hug, only to realize that she was reaching for the Chinese food, <laughs> which she held securely on her lap as I wheeled us to a spot to have some lunch, a little bit removed, but where we could still be seen, you know, where she could show off her grandchild and her chicken with cashews, not in that order. There'd be a big to-do about wrapping up leftovers, and then she would have me wheel her back toward her private room uh, in the rear of the nursing home, but taking some circuitous route so she could point out some of her many suitors. She, Carlton over there, he has a crush on me. Now, Frank, he's a flirt. Once back in her room, we'd talk for another couple of hours and then I'd leave. Well, it was one of these visits. It was specifically Christmas Eve day, and I had deliberately chosen to see her then because I knew so many other folks in the nursing home would have family visiting, and I didn't want her to be lonely. And we were uh, at the part of the visit where we were chit-chatting back in her room, and I remember somebody coming in from the nursing home to change her sheets because it was exactly at that moment that she pivoted the conversation, and she looked at me, and she said, Honey, I have something to tell you. My mother was Catholic. What? And again, she's told me, she said that, she told me that her mother was Catholic. Now, this was a stunner. And I should say that my grandmother's cognition and memory were perfectly intact, so this was not that. And I fought the story for a few minutes, and then I sort of surrendered to it, and the only thing I could think to do was to ask her, Grandma, why are you telling me this now? And she responded, I have my reasons, which is what she always said when she wanted to end a conversation with any of her grandchildren. I remember the person uh, changing her sheets, finishing up, and it was at that moment that I, I lunged for the landline because I needed to call my mom. I needed someone to verify this story. And I'm about to do that, and she puts her hand on mine and says, you don't need to do that. I said, no, Grandma, I need to call my mom because if what you're telling me is true, then your mother was Catholic, which means by Jewish law, you're not Jewish, which means my mom isn't Jewish, which means I'm not Jewish. Are we Catholic? It's Christmas Eve. <laughs> She looked at me and she said, you don't need to call her. We're Jewish. Now I'm pissed at the old lady. What are you doing? And she gestured toward her bed and toward the hallway and she said, I don't want the people who work here to know that I'm Jewish. 
why? I, I felt very protective. I said, is there anti-Semitism here? No. Is anyone treating anyone unfairly here, unjustly? No. Well, well what's going on? And, and I said, Grandma, you do know that like a third of the people who live in this nursing home are, are Jewish. Uh-huh. So then why do you need to pretend that you're not? And something happened in that moment. She got a look in her eyes, something in her posture. She didn't look at me. She was quiet, which is unusual. And I stared at her, and I was waiting. And I was waiting for her to say something. And while I was waiting for her to say something, I saw something. For the first time in my then 35 years, my self-righteous, outspoken grandmother looked scared. Maybe I hadn't been able to see it up until then. I don't know. But she looked scared. And it had nothing to do with the here and now. And it had everything to do with things from her earlier life and from the intergenerational trauma of religious oppression. In other words, she had her reasons. I remember driving home sad and quiet, and our visits continued, and there was no mention, actually, of our Catholicism for a couple of months. <laughs> but then I was back out there at the end of March, and yet again, the template, the Chinese food, the leftovers, the circuitous route back toward her room, that Samuel, he says I'm sexy. And we're about 50 feet from the entrance to her, to her room, and we pass the nursing home staff workstation on our left, and I'm behind her wheelchair. And as we're slowly passing it, she all of a sudden clears her throat. And with deliberate volume and enunciation, she asks me, are you preparing this year's Easter ham? <laughs> what? <laughs> Putting my foot on the wheelchair brake. Are you preparing this year's Easter ham? I'd heard her correctly. I saw where we were. I saw what she was up to. And you know, all I wanted to do was to look into her impish brown eyes and say, Grandma, you don't need to do this. You don't need to pretend that we celebrate Easter. You don't need to pretend we're not Jewish. You're actually safe here. But that's not what I did, because that's not what she needed. So instead, I cleared my throat. And with deliberate volume and enunciation, I said, yes, Grandma. Yeah, this year I'm going to prepare the Easter ham. And she nodded and said, good. And then she paused and she said, well, you can take me to my room now. And so I released the wheelchair brake and I did just that. Thank you.